Happy Monday, everybody. Yo! Hello, hello. Hello, friends. Oh, dang. I'm gonna get started with weird things here in just a minute. Uh-huh. I yeah. just gotta finish this delicious bacon, I'm sorry. Andrew's eating bacon, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's too much bacon on his plate. I don't know why I cooked Getting all this bacon. Bacon mm. life. <sighs> what do you think is the perfect amount of bacon? Like it, it, on like a plate, like one strip, you're at like a place for bacon and eggs. One strip too few. How many too many? Uh I'm 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 a two strip man these days. Two strips, Andrew? Yeah. Five is too many, or five is is what, what you expect? Five, I feel like I've had my fill of bacon, because I probably wouldn't have bacon again for a long, long time. Yeah. But also, like, uh, I'm, 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 I think I, there was a time, remember when the whole internet was bacon crazy? Oh, yeah. They forgot that, uh, and, uh, not to impugn present company, but... Uh, they made the mistake of thinking bacon was some kind of main course. Um, uh, I'm a firm believer now that ba bacon is an accent, and 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 it had its brief moment in the sun of trying to be a main course, and now it deserves to go back to being an accent. Oh, you, mean, you mean like with my eggs with salsa verde and everything else that I had with this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. No. If you have oh, wait, so are you saying that that the salsa verde eggs were the accent to the bacon, or the bacon was the accent? Because it to sounds the salsa like there's more eggs. bacon than than the other things. Well, you don't know how many eggs I, the man had. I had two eggs with the. I made two eggs with salsa verde and some other stuff in it, and then I, I had you five got two eggs. Bacon. Two eggs with salsa verde. With five strips of bacon. Who who is the main course in that? The eggs. <laughs> okay. By surface area, right? right. Uh. Well, certainly could not, be by, could certainly be small not by surface area. By surface area, it's definitely the bacon. By mass, maybe. Okay. But oh uh, yeah, I guess the bacon. You're you're, you're doing like, a lot like, of ridges. It's it's two dimensional. A lot of it's, ridges it's like, on yeah, the bacon. Right? I mean, it's this five five. Bacon uh, is Kramer. Uh, Everyone loves Kramer, but but Kramer needs to show up for the for for the for the the the, the B or C story. That's the uh, I, I uh, yes that that is my contention as well. Yeah. It's not the Jerry. It's not the Elaine. It's the Kramer. Yeah. Everyone loves Kramer. That was my, fa that was my favorite, um, my favorite, mm, my, my favorite sitcom that never made it to air. Everyone loves Kramer. <laughs> <laughs> Some, something like that. I, um, the, the thing about bacon is that you get like, you open up the package, like this big thing of bacon, like, oh, you lay out a piece and it goes, yeah, it and does. It gets all small. I I will say nice. that some of my favorite mornings was in uh, the first apartment that I had out of college with my roommates. Uh, it was a couple, and uh, Beth, the girlfriend, would make just a full pack of bacon, and it would just be a pile of bacon. I mean, and coffee. That, that that to me is uh, a defensive measure uh, in in any kind of like. If, if, if you're alone in the house, I would never do that. But if, if there's other people, it's like, eh, you know, you're going to be able to throw it in the fridge, whatever you don't eat. And also, you know, every freaking person in the house is going, oh, just one. Let me well, yeah, no, because it basically became like breakfast chips. Yeah. Like it was just like a pile of things that we just like kind of pick at. And it would we never have to put it away because yeah. eventually you rip through <laughs> all of it. It's bacon. But also bacon refrigerates pretty nicely, especially if, if it's just gonna come back out and you know be reheated. Yeah. Yeah. I had like five pieces and I feel satiated. I'm not craving more bacon. Are yeah. you a are you a microwave your bacon kind of guy? Or are you a pan fry guy? Or are you um I'm a pan fry, although when I was cooking it, I'm like worried about time. I'm like, I probably should have microwaved it. A microwave bacon is so, uh, for, for me, where I really like the crispy break bacon, I want to be able to snap it in two. Yeah. The microwave is perfect for it. Can't, just, can't, can't do better than the oven then. 40, uh, 40, 40 45 seconds. Just, ooh, oven bacon. Mm, yeah. Oven fancy. bacon is the best bacon. Oven bacon will get it crispy dry. Uh, right. Well, well uh, but but still, strangely moist inside. Like I, I don't I, want any of that. I want paper. I want paper dry. 
Uh, I mean, you want you, cray paper bacon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kraken. I mean, Kraken. look, all I'm saying is I had never truly experienced bacon until I did the the oven oven cooked. Mm. Like uh, the bacon method is the one true way. The oven. Uh, oh, the oh. Uh, the it, bacon method. I, I, well, and that, that's from our friend uh, Dan Benjamin. If you go to thebaconmethod.com, oh, uh, it's it, it it changed my life. I've never. Oh, I guess he doesn't have it anymore. Oh, we're having trouble. Or maybe it's that just thing. baconmethod.com. Let's see if that's what it is. That's going to be the Kevin Bacon method, unfortunately. Yep, that's the one. Baconmethod.com. Oh, uh, site from the, there was Dan Dan Benjamin there. Uh, hey, Dan. It is. It is. It is the best bacon, full stop, bar none, next level. I thought I knew what bacon was until I had this. Damn. There you go. Thanks, bacon. It's a pretty fancy bacon arrangement. I'm just like, throw it in the skillet, flip it, put a paper towel on it, get some oil, done. And you're good to go. Yeah. That's the nice thing about the microwave is put it between two towels. And you're soaking up you're some, of the, some of the grease. Yeah. Bryce, you ever try one of those things where you hang it and it just drips? In the microwave? No, I haven't had that. I haven't seen that. Kind of cool. Uh, well, it's like a wavy. Uh... Oh, well, and I bet that, it, I bet it dries it out with like waves. A, Ooh. There's a rack. Oh, nice. It's like a bacon rack. Nice bacon things, rack. Things like with a laundry. <gasps> Epic bacon rack. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> you guys want to do some weird things? Let's do it. Ready, ready. All right. The, the, the yolks are not runny at all. That's gross. Uh, ooh. I don't like a runny yolk. Get out. All right, Andrew, I'm going to count you in for weird things in three. Two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Yo! Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hello. And Bryce Castillo. Hello. Gentlemen, I want to start off the story with a delightful tale of two wild animals, two species in which we love gorillas and chimpanzees. Okay. Scientists yeah, they're, they're ever a... get together and argue like one wants to play chess, the other one wants to play beat you up. <laughs> well, Brian, oh, geez. in this story, a scientist for the <laughs> first time ever uh, witnessed a different kind of interaction they had not seen before between chimps and gorillas. Uh, and... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, okay. I already, was it, was it I already diplomacy or negotiation? No, I think I have a guess. Uh, uh, but but I but 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 it sounds like there are more details before I guess. So this is a, there's a team. The Wongo Chimpanzee Project's been studying the great apes in their park for several years. From 2014 to 2018, the team documented nine occasions in which chimpanzees and gorillas hung out together, which they often do in this park and elsewhere in Eastern and Central Africa. And these encounters were always peaceful and occasionally involved co-feeding and fruit trees. And it even witnessed some playful interactions between the great ape species. So imagine their surprise when in 2019, the team witnessed not one, but two violent encounters, each in fatalities. In both cases, chimpanzees formed coalitions, attacked the gorillas, and used their greater numbers to their advantage. Okay, that was so not they, what I thought. I thought it was going to be like a chimpanzee was like, no, wait, watch. You use a stick and you poke it in the ant mound, and now you have ants on a stick. And the gorilla was like, whoa, that's a good trick. No, turn, instead turn, they squatted it up and hunted and, them and just like pack them. animals. Yeah, yeah. So that had never happened before? Or that, that, is, that is rare? They never observed it before. Never observed, yeah. Uh, uh, and, uh, did, uh, it, okay, uh, oftentimes, I, 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 not to go all Columbo, but um, what's the motive <laughs> Here, <laughs> well, we'll we'll get in we'll get in a second, but like the the gorillas were in the outer range of the chimps' territory, and I'll give you let me give you the numbers here. A group of twenty seven chimps oh. attacked five gorillas, two male silverbacks, and two adult females on one infant. Oh, um, oh, could have at least kidnapped the infant and raised it as one of their own. Well, they didn't raise a, it as their own, Brian. Disney movie? Like, this is the, this is the, the cold, hard world yeah. of, of the wild, yeah. Brian. Yeah, Brian, they kidnapped the infant, but they did not raise it as their own. Uh, they ate, uh, wait, Yeah, let's they move ate on. It? We're rolling on. We're rolling on. Uh, We're rolling on. Uh, 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 wow. So, uh, I guess, how much do <laughs> chimps have a, a reputation of hunting impacts in, in general, just beyond the, the, the gorilla violence? 
Uh, yeah, they're known for doing this with monkeys. They're known for doing this. Uh, chimps, chimps are omnivores. They are opportunistic meat eaters, and they will eat. You know, they will do this. Um, you know, they're known for basically. Uh, they will chimps. Chimps are the delightful little jerks of the wild. Like they will kidnap uh, infant humans. They're known for doing wow. this, and they it's, it does not end well for the infants. Uh, so in this war for the planet of the apes, uh, the, uh, uh, <laughs> why did you mug? Uh, yeah. Audio listeners, you just missed a very coquettish look directly down the barrel Ooh. of the camera for Brian. <laughs> it's the title of a movie. Um, the, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Guys, yeah, there not, you go. Uh, sorry. Just in I, case, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> people didn't get that. Go ahead. Um, uh, What's funny is if you told me this was about a deer or about like an invasive group of um, poachers, humans or whatever, I don't I wouldn't have blinked an eye. But it, I suppose it's the similarity between uh, or, or, or I, 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 I don't know. I, I guess it's how close I perceive uh, those great apes that that it seems weird. But well, but, <laughs> the. Brian, uh, there's another great ape uh, that <laughs> does these things, and cannibalism is not completely no longer practiced in certain parts of the world. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm glad you brought up what a disappointment season three of Hannibal is. Uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's uh, uh, I mean, ultimately, I would imagine that 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 a gorilla is different enough from a chimpanzee. I mean, first of all, we have, we have stories of people with missing fingers who are raising chimpanzees as pets, and then they're all like, "Oh no, you didn't mean it. Um, I, I, I'm sure they just thought I was having a stroke and thought that biting off my fingers would fix it." Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's the. the Reasons for it, scientists say it may have to do with like maybe climate change affecting the availability of fruit. There's certainly problems with like the lands in which they lived have been encroached upon by people. And so, uh, you know, we we may be part of the instigator of this when there's plenty of room for them to do as they please. But, the, all, the, you know, this part of Africa, the Congo, has, uh, you know, dealt with calamity after calamity. You know, it, it, it's always been a in somewhat hostile environment, not helped by like, you know, being, you know, exploitation, you know, from colonialism, et cetera. And, you know, the, the abuses of the people that put upon there that took a system was already probably uh, very chaotic and made it worse and still is never going to put it back together. And like, you know, I was reading the Michael Crichton book, Congo, actually, and then he talks about like in this region and mentions like, oh, this tribe, which practices cannibalism on a regular basis. I'm like, well, I wonder if like, I wonder what happened to that. I go pull up Wikipedia. Nope, still happening, you know. And then the the book kind of goes into saying, "Here's the thing about cannibals: is that like they're generally very nice people, very polite, very gracious, whatever. But this is just the thing, you know. And then there are people like, no, that's not true. That's a that's a myth said by you know Westerners to sort of like, ah, no, it's pretty well documented. And you know, I mean, what I want to know is uh, whether or not a crime was committed. And it seems to me like we have to have a, 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 a ape court and uh, you know, <laughs> have, have the surviving members of the gorillas come and, and, yeah. and plead their case. Hi, I'm John Ape, and this is my court. <laughs> nah, 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 ape court. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, I'd like to order, order in the <laughs> ape court. <laughs> I'd like to call first uh, uh, representative, the attorney for the uh, uh, chimps, Andrew Maine. Also, right off to the side, uh, Nim is signing all of this for, for anybody <laughs> just to prove that he can. John Ape <laughs> says, can it? <laughs> Uh, to you, <laughs> I'm sorry. person adding context and color. Uh, I, back to back to Andrew, the the uh, attorney for the chips. I need to know what the specific charge here is. What is that that, that my my clients are guys can climb that get down from there? Okay, uh, what is it that my clients like? Uh, no, you cannot eat your face, my guy. What are they being charged with? I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> don't, don't throw that. Johnny. Don't, don't throw that up. Um, 
<laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Your, 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 your clients are being charged. Your honor. He's with... clearly trying the old tried and tired defense of the crazy apes. And we wow. all know that they're I haven't not even crazy. done they your do introduction exactly. yet. Okay. All right. You, you knock it off. I'm clearly the prosecution because that's you're the only the, role. Well, now. yeah, you're the prosecution. Okay. <laughs> but right. I mean, we're trying to do a show. <laughs> I'm trying to get this thing to a hundred episodes so I can start pushing syndication. <laughs> Jeez, it's already a total disaster. Okay, so your charges for your clients in this, the John Ape Court of Law uh, television show, is uh, uh, that that uh, uh, they uh, were not, they've never been observed doing this, and that uh, the, the family of the uh, uh, gorillas, gorillas that were killed uh, are now looking for restitution. Okay, you say there was a gorilla killed. Yeah. I haven't seen a body. I haven't seen any proof of this. <laughs> no. We just have hearsay. Okay. Here is well, let the me, body for this gorilla. Let me introduce the prosecution okay, for you. the uh, 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 gorillas, Brian Brushwood. Uh, you know what, Your Honor? Uh, I think that response is a bunch of mm, ape dung, by which I mean, here's your body, Your Honor, oh. because clearly they ate them, All including right. that baby, that poor defenseless baby gorilla. He could have grown up I to be the next his- king of Kong. This prosecution's a pile of crap. I'm not going <laughs> to stand for this. Oh, no. All he right. can fling that all he wants. Uh, by the which way. Which I uh, consider uh, uh, an uh, insult to my chimpanzee clients, by the way. Uh, also, uh, they right now, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually this, making this. a note. Uh, so there's like a pop-up video graphic that pops up well, after the second throwing crap thing that this is a normal way that ape uh, lawyers <laughs> are... <laughs> Are, are, are uh, you know, conduct themselves. At, at this point, on behalf of uh, the gorillas, I begin to beat my chest and be like, you want to go? You want to go? Where's your sticks now? Order in the Look court, not in John Ape's court. Look at my adorable clients here, smoking their cigars, <laughs> riding their bicycles, dressed up in outfits and having tea time. Do you really think they're capable of doing the horrific thing you said? Sorry, well, they were well, definitely gorillas they were de- here. Can't it, hear I you. have yet to pay repetitions for for New York City and what would happen there. <laughs> All right, that that we're getting outside the scope of John Ape's court. Uh, uh, we we have we have a family of, of gorillas that were dead, and your clients were there no, at the scene. I believe it was one, 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 one. They Wait. attacked. So you do admit that they did kill one gorilla. No, I'm <laughs> saying when the ape cop wrote the ticket, that's what it said. This sounds like a technicality. What do you say to that? Hold on. I'm going to take a moment to take a sip from my ape cocoa. The gorilla. Oh, my God. God damn it. There, I find I, in favor <laughs> of the chimpanzees. You've done your clients a tremendous disservice. We'll see in you later on oh, John Ape's crazy. Ape Court. At, at this point, all... all <laughs> All the chimpanzees all for my clients for Ape Court. Just, yeah. defeated, just beating the hell out of me. <laughs> all clients on uh, Ape Court are furnished with uh, uh, rotary telephones and a uh, pile of bones. Suits provided by yeah. the men's warehouse. Suits, yeah, suits provided by Great Apes. When you want a Great Ape suit, go to Great Ape Suits. Now, bringing justice to the ape kingdom isn't easy, folks. That's why we need your support. Indeed. Uh, I'm really glad that you brought that up because patreon.com slash weird things is where you can support this very show. If you head on over there right now, you give us a little bit of your hard-earned coin. We will continue to give you these episodes as well as the After Things podcast, which is what happens after we do weird things. We talk about all of our entrepreneurial stuff and tell you what, there have been a lot of good episodes lately because we've had a lot of stuff that's in the works and launching and we uh, we, we go into some uh, 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 pretty specific details uh, on, uh, on, on After Things. And here's so. a promise you won't get from any other podcast. 100% of all the money donated to patreon.com slash weird things will go to ape related impulses in that it's in that we spend we're we're, we're all spending we the money on things that we apes. wanted yeah. yeah we we just mostly it's us but we do talk about apes a lot right. just in general like i would i would reckon it's probably a solid 20 percent of all of my communication with andrew over the lifetime of our multi-decade <laughs> friendship <laughs> You say it like it's a bad thing? I don't. No, I'm saying it like I'm trying to quantify it. I just want to let everybody know. (laughs) Yes. 
So our next story comes from a contributor named Bryce. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it just it just reads, help, help. There are chimpanzees everywhere. Only you can get here in time. Uh, uh, stop. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I once wrote a story when I was in high school and it was like a journal and it was a scientist saying that he's been studying these little, these tiny little monkeys in there. He says that they're, they're creative, but they're really dumb. I'm going to try dissecting one of them or something like this. And then the journal ends and it has these little bloody footprints walking across the page. <laughs> I, 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 I like the idea of it because I, I said stop like it was a telegram. And I love the idea that somebody is like, is if it's a phone call, like they're, they're sending a telegram as they're being killed <laughs> and then the telegraph operator makes sure to put the word stop at the stop. end of the mid sentence line <laughs> <laughs> a mel brooks movie waiting to happen <laughs> so uh hey uh you know nostalgia is pretty cool right you yeah. all remember nostalgia yeah yeah although it pains me a little bit to remember it mm. that's true that's true you know i mean covid cool and all you know i mean that's what the co I'm stands sure. for <laughs> yeah right i mean you know death rates horrific all of this it's fine if we're gonna have a horrible disaster to befall us and depress us and watch people we love die fine but you know if you're a hipster it's not good enough you know like no. it's just a new thing yeah how about how about bringing back the plague oh you mean the actual bubonic plague Mm -hmm. hmm. So, wait. What do you mean by bringing it back? Like, like in only in me ways. and my cool friends can get it, or is this gonna go mainstream like COVID? Did? <gasps> wait a minute. Well, Hold on. If it is a hipster thing, then that's something. If 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 plague was carried by fleas on rats, the only person like if you're in a group of people at Denny's at three a.m. and one person's got a pet rat, that person's gonna be a hipster. Yeah. Uh, this is a whole nother sojourn a, into who's most likely, what stereotype is most likely to own a rat. But uh, yeah, it's actually a horrific story. Um, okay. That is that there, there is a young girl has died, and there is to remind us that, like, yes, nature wants to kill us. Mm -hmm. And there was a uh, basically they detected a plague in six counties in Colorado, including a young, a ten year old girl recently died from causes so to with the infectious disease. And so, you know, I start off with a joke and then I, I realize uh, that people's lives are I, affected I, by this. I, 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 am I half remembering and I, I, I just assume you know more about this than I do. But uh, did, did did I make up remembering that there was some contingency that we're maintaining that the plague wasn't actually carried by fleas on the backs of rats, but instead some other vector or or. Or am I remembering arguments from the 1600s? Um, uh, I, I, I thought I thought there was some kind of scientific back pedal on that, but it, it's it's fine if 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 I just so, made that up. So what happens is that you can get it. You get you can get bubonic plague because the rat because like the you can get the fleas probably on rats to get to you and get affect you. But then you can develop bubonic plague, but it can get severe enough, and then. Uh, it can reach the lungs and then you can spread it. And that's when it becomes pneumonic plague. Yeah. Uh, still, still has that P word. Uh, don't, don't, don't love it. Mm -hmm. Don't love the P word. Uh, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, man, that sucks. Uh, and, and, and is, is there, my guess is there's no vaccine. <laughs> Otherwise it seems like we would have gotten vaccinated. What's a back yeah. Cause it's a bacteria. So it's harder to sort of, you know, preventing it, but it is treatable. It's a thing. If you notice early with the early onset, this is what's going on. Cause it might look like flu. You might feel like you have flu and a really bad flu. And we don't really, I don't know any of the details about this, but I could imagine that this may have been a case like, Oh, maybe it's COVID COVID. They take, Oh no, it's not COVID. Everything's, you know, just go home and rest off the flu. And I'm, I'm making this up. I have no idea what happened. Okay, sure, but sure. Sure. But, 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 but that, that is a, a scenario I could totally picture where it's just, um, it's uh, kind of, as you said, hipster enough, that it that it flies under the radar and uh, everyone's looking for the mainstream diseases. Nobody's looking for me, the plague. I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. I guess it, so. This as a killer is very spare, based on that World Health Organization uh, infographic that we were looking at. That that we have in the modern era 
uh, which is between 2010 and at that point, 2015, under 600 people had died, uh, you know, obviously in comparison to the Middle Ages when 50 million people died, estimated, of, 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 of the plague. So I guess this is something where it is treatable and, uh, uh, you know, deaths are rare. Yeah. Yeah, it is one of these things that once you know that you have it, we can do like an antibiotic load. We can do a lot of things to sort of, you know, help you with it. But it's just it's knowing what you have. And that's that's one of the problems is that better diagnostic tools could for set aside being able to have cures for stuff, knowing earlier on what somebody has. If you can bring in treatment early, you can help them out. And sometimes the frustrating part is that a doctor is going to say, well, I'm not, and, and not to blame a doctor, but like you've come in with a thing, they're going to test for the most common thing. And then they're going to wait a few days to see if that's it or whatever the time like this. I'm like, okay, now we'll test for the rarer thing. But that's when sort of critical time is elapsing. And it's because of costs and whatnot. And it's, it's not, not, not a criticism of the way that's done, but it is sort of, hey, we can lower the cost. of you, know, you could go in there and you could like, you know, give a few drops of blood or whatever and test for everything. That would be wonderful. Well, and and that will be kind of uh, one of one of the biggest advances. I I think we'll get to see in our lifetime is AI AI uh, lab techs basically, where it's like they can they can they can slice down you know uh, take a single vial of blood and just run all the tests and you know have it in fact as long as we're making stuff up uh, have it be in a solar power run facility you know out in the middle of the Arizona desert or whatever. Um, I don't know. Well, yeah, there, there's, remember, that was the promise of Theranos. You know, Theranos was, we're going to put like, you know, one drop of blood and we'll be able to do all these tests. And then with no idea how they were going to do it, but it sounded like a great <laughs> idea. But there are, one little catch, but there are other companies of working on that. How much, how much, do you, how much a sample is something you need to do it? What kind of tests can you do? And we've seen a big, yeah, obviously within the, in the COVID world, we've seen this big acceleration towards those. But, you know, ideally it'd be like you just in your house, Brian, you just pulled up a thing like a little glucose meter or whatever, stick yourself and then, no, Brian, you're still a hypochondriac. It just tells you that. <laughs> I like, Did you well, have five well, pieces well, of bacon I mean, today? Uh, I, I, I don't think they'll come back with that. I think they'll come back with um, uh, good news, bad news. Uh, 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 good news, you don't have, you know, a uh, 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 ha hantavirus or whatever it's called. Uh, but but uh, bad news uh, uh, dude, you do need to sharpen up that diet. I'm looking at your triglycerides right now, <laughs> and it's like, like ne never let uh, a, 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 a emergency go to waste or whatever. Like, if you're worried about anything, let me give you something to do. I mean, but that's like the the our modern kind of like step guides and step trackers, or like the Apple Watch or whatever, where it's like uh, the Apple Watch doesn't recognize that I'm I'm under a lot of stress right now. <laughs> like, like it just keeps demanding that I go out and, and or the, or that I'm on burn. a plane. Like like, like yeah, right. Like, I mean, we've talked about this before, but I can't say enough just how useless and and possibly malignant the reminder to get up and move around is. Like like it quite. I, I think it 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 inures you to the necessity to do it, and it makes you just like 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 ugh, this thing again. Let me make sure to never pay attention to this reminder ever. I, I think it, it does it does bring us back to a, a larger kind of question about this, our modern move toward the quantifiable self for which something like, you know, these kinds of blood tests would be uh, very helpful for, which is like not necessarily that we can do it, but how does it make us better? Like, yes, we have the data, so, but like how do we synthesize it in a way that we can that we can make better decisions and and be better for it? I have an idea. Go ahead. So, you know, I, you know, I go to the doctor, you know, actually, you don't even see a doctor, you go to the nurse and you're like, oh, your blood pressure is a little high. What are you going to do to fix this? And I'm like, realistically, nothing right now. Uh, like, oh, we need to do this. You know, I had this conversation with a nurse who was very concerned, very caring person, but also a very large person. And, and I'm like, it's like in my head, I'm like, you know more about this than I do. If it was easy to change your behavior and do this, we'd all be doing this. But I used to drive by a hospital in the loading dock. I would see nurses, orderlies, and doctors out there smoking. And yeah. it's like, I'd look at like, why are we spending money on billboards? Because clearly people got the message. It's just a matter of choice. But imagine an app. And instead, it's like, yo, Bryce, uh, you should go play some ring fit for 15 minutes. Oh, 
Okay. You know, like, oh, uh, you know, how about some Beat Saber? Do 10 minutes of Beat Saber. You know, like, oh, like, imagine if you just sort of, I don't know, the, the I, kind I, of sort of gamification, but. I, yeah, I mean, I, I could see buying into like a credit system where it's just like, hey, man, I'll make you a deal. Beat Saber right now, 10 minutes, you get a milkshake tonight. I'm like, oh, damn, I, I would, you, you I would love. Poli- <laughs> yeah, but that, that's not going to, I can have a milkshake right now anyways. Like, I can't, I mean, if I had the discipline to need to use that app that way, I wouldn't need the app. Well, I, th- I think we're, we're kind of getting to the, the larger vexing problem, which is that everybody's motivated in, in different ways. And we, like, th- there is the question of, is the building of motivational habits instructional in that, you just need to be told, hey, do this. Or in, in Andrew's point of view, uh, there could be an integration between quantifiable self and knowing your habits enough that it could suggest that you play your favorite game or suggest that you return to these activities because by building up with that, you would see the benefits of living a more healthful life and you would want to do it more yourself. Or is it something that needs to be kind of gamified and tricked you know like you into doing it like can you be trusted to follow instructions or is the inability to follow instructions gonna totally submarine your effort to create a new habit in the in 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 the first place because it's like in in uh uh you know your situation brian if you're like if i'm trading 30 minutes of of beat saber for milkshakes then really the only habit we're gonna learn is that hey i i can if I do 60 minutes of Beat Saber, I can get two milkshakes. I mean, and I... Now you're talking. Assuming that that that, that works, then that'd be fine. Although I could also see uh, a tricky thing, like we were talking about uh, Pokemon Go and the various... Uh, uh, the new Witcher game. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I could see a version of that that's secretly a health app where it's just like, all right, uh, here's your score, here's your standing, and I know you have access to this amount of space around your place. And it's like, I'm going to give you a triple X bonus multiplier. Uh, if you can get there, if you can get there in the next five minutes at the very back of the seven acres, then you can get a three X bonus to get this thing. And uh, yes, I do get the points. But what I really am getting is like uh, uh, one step, two three step. you know, like it's, it's yeah. figuring out. It's, how, it's about getting I really like that. I really like that. It, it's about getting people it- motivated, I feel like, because I, I was talking to somebody um, over the past week and I had mentioned that I go to the gym uh, kind of a lot now and they're like well you know how do you how do you like get the motivation to do it but i i like going i have a, i go and i have a good time you know uh, working out or trying different routines well, and stuff it, it, but all, it, I, it, all i can all i can think of is price in like a jazzercise like huh? you know i've started it, wearing a headband because because <laughs> i get to it pastel and, like you know uh, uh <laughs> just like yeah well, and, and so it's about getting motivated i think like there are so many options whether it's a ring fit or learning but, real things then once you get people over the hump they'll do it because there are similar things like what you're describing of like let's gamify exercising but those are for people who don't need the motivation and and and, and, and so we need a middle a missing link that really is a crucial thing for exercising for me is that like the, you are fundamentally dealing with two different problems when you were talking about let's get you moving from being sedentary to you already understand that when you work out these natural endorphins hit and you feel better or you feel better about yourself now we we should go into this other direction of getting you to a point where you feel the best that you possibly could based on the effort that you put in there because i do think that like you know uh uh Look, couch to 5K is great. Mm-hmm. You are on the couch and you want to run a 5K. Once you do that, you kind of need a new framework. And I think all of the fitness stuff on some level, because entry level is, the, is, is where the money is, everything is kind of tilted toward that, even the gamification stuff. Yeah. I, but I like, to, back to Brian's idea of the take your environment you're in, give you a place, a destination to walk to, <coughs> and you could do it where... Because you could mix the idea of exploring where you are to the idea of like, I live in a neighbor. I used to always do the same walk, but it's like, oh, go walk this way, go here. And this is also a mile. And you'll see, you know, there be either cool AR things you might collect along the way or other things. Uh, not not to continue giving out free plugs, but that Witcher game kind of has that. They have quests in that game. And so like one of the first things you do is you meet someone and they say, hey, this monster ate my horse. 
and it just finds somewhere nearby on the map, on your local map, and says, mm -hmm. it's somewhere around here. Go there and see if you can find it. Um, That's cool. Yeah. I, I'll I, check that out. I I was seeing it, too, because you could do a thing like the walk thing, whatever. Like, you could get extra points if you do it with a friend. So that would be oh, yeah? motivating yeah. a friend to go do that with you. There's 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 not enough, I think, of, of that kind of in-person or just one one and one kind of cooperative there's it's a lot of competitive stuff but but especially some of the beginner things there's not a lot of like ring fit ring fit's very cool but it is a it's a sing it's a it's one person game you yeah know? and also it doesn't take you too long to figure out like oh these are just squats you're it's <laughs> like, almost like, entirely I, I, squats yeah yeah right <laughs> especially well, uh, when you do yeah. the apartment running and you just <laughs> are only doing squats the entire time can i I love it, but it's two years old. I was mm -hmm. I was hoping that yeah. I would be paying if they came out with a new, completely new game, even using some of the same exercises like every six months or so. I'd buy it. I I think like 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 my my guess would be that they are building a frame because they've done a lot of DLC and they've a lot of done upgrades for Ring Fit. My guess would be maybe continue plussing that until you have a format or a you know something that you can do that where every couple of years you go in and you add more more exercises or more story stuff yeah it just it's still within that universe where you know if they had you know you know marvel superheroes you know ring fit you know where you're hawkeye using the bow and you finally make him an interesting character and <laughs> whatever like there could be things like that could be cool like i could just say like just use it with different content you know that's that's my that's my one gripe on get, it get so, kumail get kumail to be the uh to be the face of it all the uh the the <laughs> thing i would worry about is just picking a game that's easier and i wonder if building in like the most uh like vegas has figured this out where it's like the quote-unquote boring part of slots is the part where you just you know keep on hitting the button and spending all your money but every so often you enter like a crazy bonus mode that 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 they're like oh this is the special game i'm i i kind of won just by getting into this 3x 4x 6x multiplier mode or whatever uh i can see a version of a game where it's like part of it is Witcher style running around doing things, but then, but then you, you get credits or tokens, uh, you earn stuff so that when you're waiting, you know, in line or whatever, you could play a more fun, lower impact, less moving around version of the game. Like mm -hmm. a, like a, like a, 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 a golf battle. Is that what it was called? Golf battle? Golf uh, something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 But, but, but something like that where it's like, it, it, like, like, oh man, I'm so glad I went and slayed those monsters all over my neighborhood because now I have these credits to spend when I'm bored and, and I don't have to go anywhere. You know, I just look at it like for updates on like, here's the, here's the thing from Nintendo life. New ring fit adventure trailer reminds us of, reminds us of that dusty ring con of shame. <laughs> <that I look. laughs> yeah. And I see my dusty ring con of shame on the floor. <laughs> I, I, I wonder if there is uh, there we, we there's so much money that gets put into like capturing the fitness and health market that m maybe it's just a natural part of the process that people get get in get in the door and then start to figure it out themselves. I don't know. Um, mo I mean, motivation is so important and it keeps so many people from I don't know uh, getting more yeah, active. Part of Part of what like when like CrossFit and these other things do is they have to kind of keep coming up with different things, different exercises for you to do because the boredom wears in. Right. Mm. Because we're only, all novelty you know, seeking around. entities. Yeah. Yeah. And once you you and if you're not trying to get into strength building, it doesn't matter if like, well, I flipped an even bigger tire today. It's like I can't flip a tire, you know? Yeah. And so and that's that was exciting at first with VR was you know, Beat Saber's cool, and then the the head of the Beat Saber division at Oculus had tweeted something out and I responded. I'm like, hey, like I would I would gladly pay a subscription fee for like new music on there every month. Mm -hmm. Like these download packs of like, you know, uh Limp Biscuit aren't gonna cut it. <laughs> they need, like I would like to no no disrespect to right. the Limp or Biscuit. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. I would love uh uh Fred Durst would kill me. Um I would love how would you kill him? A, like what if there was one? He would sick a bunch of chimpanzees way. on him. How would he kill me? No, how would Fred, I don't know for just yeah. Kill me. I mean, I like know. if there was some kind of saw, like that had like a chain on it. Would it be a chainsaw. 
Skin, uh, I mean, skin it might just raw. be me in a chair. He keeps listening. going this way. He just might break Fred Durst's face tonight. Give me something to break. Give me something to break. Sorry. <laughs> they have, so they have a Limp Bizkit one on Beat Saber? <laughs> yeah. So, uh... Um, There's no explaining it. There's yeah. you can't explain it. It's, uh, sorry, yeah. it's too big to explain. Uh, but yeah, I think that I would love for like the subscription service. So I could just pay for new content or something. You know, like you could I, just like keep it with Beat Saber. I, uh, I think I think that I think that that's that that's that's a great idea. And, and we are still in so many ways. I think at the beginning of figuring out where the a la carte versus subscription thing is, and and I. People, I think, are are a little hesitant to get into subscription uh, stuff because we have subscription fatigue, and and you know, uh, I think that it's it's looked at by some uh, users as like, oh, okay, well, here's another thing that you want me to just keep paying, uh, you know, money for month after month. But in in those situations, especially for habit forming stuff, and and also for ring fi- for uh, sorry, beat Saber, if you are. Um, you know, looking at it as a fitness thing, subscriptions with, you know, equipment based fitness stuff is a gigantic part of the market, considering how big, uh, you know, Peloton and now all of the competitors have gotten. Well, and and even uh, if you don't want to go full subscription, like, um, uh, unfortunately, like, I don't know, we'll take Rock Band as an example. Yeah. Like all of those 99 cent tracks, you know, I, I carefully decided which ones I was going to buy and all that stuff. And then now it's like they're all tied to a platform that I don't use and don't have anymore. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. But whereas like um, if, if, you know, I, I dropped 20 bucks for a month long you know, pass to everything right now, you know, on a random Tuesday night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll That's, do it. I'll do it right now. I swear to God. Don't do it. I swear. <laughs> like, I'll, kill, I'll, I'll kill a family of gorillas. I got uh. 24 other friends. <laughs> but you only have 12 hours to do it. You've only paid for 12 hours. Yeah. That's how they do it with, um, like, the Just Dance games, right? Like, they, like they've they kind of cracked that nut a little bit with me, with where music games are now, which is not where they used to be back in the rock band days. But they've, they've recognized that people don't want to buy DLC packs. They don't want to buy big plastic instruments. You know, they just want to pay, hey, just let me pay you and, do, and let me do the thing. I mean, that's what the Guitar Hero was. Guitar Hero Live was an attempt to kind of be like that, too. Yeah. Um, but just people, we don't have the same taste for music games as, or the same hunger as we used to back then. Well... I found a couple of TikTok videos of Fred Durst about where is Fred Durst now, including one of him in a grocery store. <laughs> Put it in the chat here, just in case you're wondering. That's just in by, case by the way, that's that's the reason I never want to retire is because I don't want anybody to ever ask where where am I now. <laughs> like I want to just yeah. always be there. <laughs> that's amazing. Brian, he has your old haircut there. <laughs> yeah, he has my current haircut. <laughs> <laughs> then the next one is. So uh, is this Fred Durst doing TikTok videos? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just him himself. That's pretty great. Okay, that's awesome. This woman asks, excuse me, are you Fred Durst? And he goes, depends upon what you want. And in Spanish, she asks for watermelons. He goes, oh, that's an aisle, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So, now we know. Now we know, everybody. Uh, I think that, yeah, constantly innovating, coming up with things to do, I think is sort of the way to do it. I don't think we're going to find one thing that makes it all work. Or we just come up with a pill. I'm all for that. I'd like a pill. Yeah, I don't know. Um, hmm. Uh, 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 what's funny is I want to wish for a holodeck, but a VR VR headset pretty much is a holodeck. It's pretty amazing. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As they get lighter, I mean, as they get lighter in your battery and all this, I think we can see the pathway there. And I oh, think with uh, AR. Uh, by the way, there was a uh, discussion on one of the. Uh, uh, VR forums, I think the Vive one, asking whether or not the uh, the Vive with the knuckles interface, uh, where with the finger articulation, yeah. is worth it, and the answer universally seemed to be yes, but not as worth getting the wireless one with the battery uh, pack on the back because um, um, uh, we all love our Oculus uh, uh, Rift twos, but the uh, but but they are front heavy, whereas having that battery on the back evens everything out. Mm-hmm. Apparently, that works out pretty well. So Oculus for the Quest, they've just, uh, I think they've announced like APIs for doing blended reality, which will allow you to incorporate when you're looking outside of the view. Oh, thank goodness, because I'm so tired of trying to reach for my soda just outside of the boundary 
And then all of a sudden it just cuts off my communication to everyone. I'm like, I can still hear you. Or I, I would like to be able, I, I, could, I can handle hearing you as I walk outside of the boundary. Yeah, and it's so it's yeah. I think oh, Bryce has already found it. Um, that's not creepy at all. We're watching somebody do a meeting with these like, like wax figures of Zoolander. Uh, yeah, the one on the left looks like he's in Cobra Kai. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's it's it, the the person in in control has got a slider and is able to blend. To be, both yeah, the it, meeting, it, the virtual like... meeting room that they're in, and the living room that this person is sitting in in real which life. is oddly i don't know why that would be the example of i mean what you want to do there at least anyway uh, like but cool guitar. I, yeah I, I look forward to when i'm in a meeting with real people and i accidentally reach out for my panel to just sort of fade everybody yeah, out I like fade you down what are you doing I andrew look at my love uh, seat so this was a trailer they released almost a year ago showing the oculus office where this woman's got her oculus headset on She's interacting with the browser using the, the the finger touch, you know, just using the finger recognition, which is pretty good. It's and better then she than uses I expected, for sure. Yeah, it's it's the curious things like they have like you'll see her with the keyboard and like, uh, yeah, she's all upset because she's in a kitchen and the person started using the kitchen. Um, <laughs> I need privacy. It's not enough that I've put up blinders so I don't have to see you. <laughs> but now I'm gonna yeah. leave to another room as well. And then she pulls over a keyboard. I have this keyboard, by the way. So it's a keyboard that works in VR, so oh. you can actually see it when you're in the Oculus. Oh, oh that's cool. Is it and is it worthwhile? Is it good? I I played with it just a, l a little bit. I haven't used it much. I would say that uh, it's a different keyboard than what I'm used to. So trying to adjust as a touch typist, you can look down and see your fingers. I, I don't. I think there was a bit of a latency. There was something that yeah. I think that may have been like, like felt a little bit like that. But that feels like something still. that it's either a breakthrough, amazing device, or it's just a bit outside. And that's what. Oh, I, I was just gonna say I, I will give credit where it's due. Like, boy, that gap is getting shorter and shorter. I never mm -hmm. would have expected the Quest Two to be uh, as close to. I mean, to be honest, the Quest 2, not in the game, but when you walk outside is the closest to good AR I've experienced because mm -hmm. I can keep that thing on and navigate all the way around through the house. And yeah. I get annoyed when it eventually says, OK, you're not even trying and then just goes black. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, gonna, it's one of the things that I appreciate about Apple is that they often won't do a thing until like they're like, they'll go, like, no, this latency is too long. We won't do it. And not to say every company needs to be like that, but for them, it's often by the time you get it. That was remember that was made the iPhone great, the first right. iPhone. Yeah. People forget it was it was it, like it, there, there there was very little in the original iPhone that was brand new as all as all the haters were fast to point out. Yeah, we just seen all of this. Blah, 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 blah. Where's yeah. the physical keyboard? Palm trio. <laughs> yeah, it's just the way all of it together in one device that worked really well. That yeah. was a novelty. Turned out to be very popular. Whatever happened yeah. to the iPhone? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. now making TikTok videos. Yeah. <laughs> the iPhone uh, telling you that the watermelons are in aisle two. All right. Do we have uh, picks? Yeah, man. Uh, I, I, I think I mentioned it before. I'm finally reading uh, Brandon Sanderson's series, uh, Stormlight Archives. I'm on to book two now. Oh, boy. 60 hour plus audiobooks. Those are long, but also there's bliss in not having to decide what you're going to listen to next. <laughs> you just hit the go button and then the story continues to unfold. And that's a sign of Sanderson, especially somebody who loves to write, just loves it. Uh, yeah. And, and also not for nothing. Um, uh, I think I might've said this two weeks ago, but boy, is he good at just starting a book off with a simple story at, that says things and then the moment you want to think about it he's like don't worry about it don't worry about it and then five books later it turns out that little thing that's been in front of your nose the whole time that you've been trained not to worry about turns out to be the most important thing in the whole story or whatever um it's a it's 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 a fine world and i in and, and uh, as as you know uh, andrew uh with authors the best thing you could do is build up a level of trust where it's like i know he's not going to screw me on all these questions I have about this bizarre world uh, by the end of it. I know I'm going to get some kind of answers. I'm really, really excited about it. Yeah. yeah I mean, he's, 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 he's world-class for a reason. 
uh, I, I want my pick is uh, the the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. <laughs> We okay. We we might have done like fifteen minutes of improv comedy at the at the at the backspin today. We're we're just like, uh, hey, I want to win. I want a gold medal at the Olympics. Which one was it? The garbage Olympics. Yeah, Brian. Brian is Brian is very aggressive about taking away, <laughs> taking away the achievements of every you, Olympian who wins any kind of medal because oh, no been, fans were watching. It must have been great to hear the crowds cheering for the all. Oh, Oh, <laughs> is that the one that time traveled from 2021 <laughs> back to 2020? Uh, so aside from the fact that uh, they are bizarre and uh, a year late and uh, uh, possibly uh, uh, ethically dubious, depending on where you stand, uh, I, uh, I don't know. I love the Olympics. I like the ability that like at, at any moment on uh, Peacock or any of the like seven cable channels that are simulcasting it, there's just this ADD television of somebody from the United States competing in something weird, like three on three basketball or uh, kayaking or, or, you know, uh, I don't know. I like, I like all the weird, you know, ESPN two kind of events can almost I as much as I like the big, track and field and swimming and stuff like can, that. Can I confess that I did not realize until just now when you said that, that that was the thread of between everything is it was just whatever the U S was doing. Oh yeah. I was just like, man, I'm annoyed at how, can we just watch one match of anything finish? And uh, I didn't realize that they were jumping. Well, no. And that. a lot of it is tape delayed, which is the problem is that like you get halfway through watching something and then you're like, Oh, I want to, uh, I wonder uh, what, what uh, let me update myself on whatever's happening. And it's like, Oh yeah, it happened six weeks ago. And, <laughs> and, uh, the, the, here's a picture of the person winning the gold medal. Uh, and that's that's going to be an issue with Japan that has a fairly <clears throat> diametrically opposite kind of time zone situation, which is always a bummer with the Olympics. But uh, I did wake up at seven o'clock in the morning so I could watch our men's basketball team choke to the French. Really? Yeah. Mm. Oh, the French. <laughs> so the, the the cool part about the whenever the Olympics are held is the host country. Talk about nostalgia. To, uh, gets to introduce new sports. And if the sports catch on, they can play, but they can do sports. So do you know what the four sports are that uh, Ooh, no, I know too real to find out that got added? Well, I think karate got added. Uh-huh. Uh, I believe did break dancing get added? No. Okay. God, but you're close. Great, uh, skateboarding is one of the four, correct? Correct. Well, that, that was that's like back. That, I think it, it missed one. It was there, and then it missed one. Skateboarding no, seems kind of the first overdue. time. I think it's the first, very first time. Okay. Skate Cause I, no, because I thought homeboy the 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 snowboarder competed in in the Summer Olympics too. Anyway, I thought those were the X Games. Well, Jack, I'm Jack Frost. <laughs> Um, did you say Jack Frost? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, from the Winter Olympics, Jack Frost. <laughs> yeah, totally. Representing Antarctica. <laughs> Um, uh, what are the other two? The other two are, and again, like this would have been an awesome 2020 Olympics. It would have been a great 2020 Olympics, no COVID, whatever. Yeah. Because the other two are surfing. Ooh. Oh, right. Oh, my right. God. Right. Right. And then sport climbing. Ooh, I oh, I did yeah. see. Yeah, because I guess that's running soon. And I did see a little uh, viral video hype package about how insane sport climbing is. It is it is ins it is very telegenic, like what, whatever you might think. Somebody climbing a a a a false uh, like, like a rock, rock a rock wall like you would find over at, yeah. at Lifetime Fitness. But you're or doing whatever. it as fast as possible. Holy yeah. cow. Uh, so that makes me want parkour to be a thing. That would be extraordinary. Yeah, I mean, and and you would imagine that at some point, you know, really Ooh, the question with plants, though, <laughs> the, the question with parkour is, um, you know, are you doing it more like gymnastics in that you are judging for style for and execution? Yeah, or are you just trying to get from point A to point B as fast as possible? Oh, I don't, 
I don't see this being telegenic with the climbing. The the video that I saw was a lady who was going really, really, really fast up a rock wall, and I was like, that's pretty crazy. Now, I don't know if that is a representative of all sport climbing. Just the, the viral video I saw uh, was was somebody climbing very yeah, fast. Yeah, I've seen, I've like, seen enough crazy. of the chive in the background of various bars to know that there's some impressive, like, like double handed, just thrusting your body up and then grabbing the next rung stuff that 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 sometimes. Oh happens. yeah, there's it's cool, but it's like watching that over and over again. It's like without like flamethrowers. We've watched like you know American Ninja or Ninja Warrior and all that sort <laughs> yeah, of stuff. Yeah, that's a good so point. Like, Actually, let's petition yeah. for that to be a <laughs> Ninja, Ninja Warrior to Warrior be, be an Olympic American yeah. white belt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the giant butt pooped on him. He's in I, the water. I, I'll tell you, I'm for that. I think they should put. Uh, Cause like I, I had never seen three on three basketball before, but it's all half court. In fact, it's less yeah. than half court. It's you just take the ball out beyond the three point line yep. and there's no three points. It's just trying to get in and score. And it was a uh, women's three on three and it was awesome. It was yeah. like really, really, really high pace. And it was cool because since the points are worth one and two, instead of two and three, that incentivizes them to go for threes way, way, more, way often. more often. Right. Yeah. It uh, it had a um, uh, this is unfortunately loaded uh, uh, depending on how you feel about it but it had a kind of a, almost arena football vibe to it and yeah, it's like yeah. I, I would definitely go um, I, uh, not not to get into uh, gender politics or anything but but WNBA since its inception has always been like it's the exact same game uh, only only with women instead of men and and uh, I feel like uh, that would be a fun way to break things out if if the WNBA from its inception was was that I I, I, I think it would, it would probably do better uh, yeah <laughs> uh, I got a pick other picks I got a pick uh, I, I had to do a little bit of homework on on this um, I kind of I kind of missed the boat the first time. Um, but boy, did I have a very good weekend, uh, catching up and then watching, uh, the new episode of Ted Lasso, which is back now on Apple TV plus. Um, I, I had only seen about the first three quarters of season one, I believe. Um, and so I still had all of the, all of that. To oh, go you got to experience the, uh, the end of season one. How wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, I want to say two different times got me crying. At least I don't even remember them now anymore. But man, this is a is a really interesting show. Um, uh, if you don't know it, it's it's about an American high school football, um, American football college. coach. Oh, college? Yeah, college football. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Those uh, viral with uh, a with a big fun celebration. Yeah, and he gets brought in to coach a, a Premier League um, soccer uh, English football. Um, team and he's he's a bundle of joy he's really sweet he's like uh but he's but he's a he's a he's a like a hud sucker proxy he's a he's a patsy he's there to be the fool he's there, right he's there to suck he was brought in to to tank the team um and i think season two is interesting um i've only seen the first episode there's uh i, I there's a time skip that's how it begins i won't tell you any more than that but i think it's an interesting way it's a, i think it's a cool way to start um just get right back into the into the next season um i'm i'm digging it i'm digging it what do you guys think uh, i watched all of it mm -hmm. and in order to do it justice on cord killers i'm going to have to at least review most of it because um for reasons that are obvious if you have seen it uh i couldn't hear most of the first half of it because my daughter was screaming nonstop about how awful the opening okay. scene was where nothing was shown, but something was implied. Oh yeah! Ooh. <laughs> oh yeah! That's that's not gonna fly well with the Brushwood daughters for sure. No, no. And it's like I was like, I watched all of that. Why do I remember so little and found so little of it funny? And so I'm, I'm like, oh, that's right, because I literally couldn't hear it over the howls of anger and frustration. Yeah. Um. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how this season unfolds because, uh, especially for me, who is coming from directly from the tail end of last season, which kind of has some big moments, kind of some big climactic payoffs on some of the arcs, and uh, I'm I'm excited. I'm interested. I think that they've created an interesting new dynamic. I I read a little uh, feature story the other day about how uh, 
actual professional football coaches, Ted Lasso is unsurprisingly like their favorite show. <laughs> and, uh, uh, there have been like, an uptick of quoting Ted Lasso to actual players. And uh, Steve Kerr, the coach of the uh, Golden State Warriors, his quote was, Ted Lasso is proof that uh, uh, in professional sports, uh, culture defeats scheme. So you want a, you want a good culture more than you uh, it would benefit you to have the perfect you know strategy. Mm, yeah. Uh, so that's my pick. Uh, uh, Ted Lasso and Apple TV Plus. They're giving out Apple TV Plus all over the place. I'm sure you can find a way to watch it for free. Yeah. Andrew, you got a pick? I do, but I'd say like one of the things you can do too is go take a look at some of the older Ted Lasso clips from NBC Sports as he worked on the character. That's right. Originally, Which this was, was a, a character for like yeah for NBC Sports' uh, TV coverage and 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 passed on apparently by everybody up to and including yeah. NBC, where Jason Sudeikis and Bill Lawrence both had previous relationships with previous hit things. Uh, but yeah, they passed on it. Netflix passed on it. It was it was like on its kind of last legs when it went to Apple, and now it's like the signature the Apple best show thing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So uh, I don't know if you, you got to catch any of the Shark Week content this year, oh. but uh, what about, they just aired, what about a special where they take a 90-year-old man and let him swim with tiger sharks? Wow. Uh, <laughs> That's exciting. All right, are you talking? What if that man's name? Oh, okay, yeah, it is the one I'm thinking of. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, what if that man's name was William Shatner? Oh. And he... He had his episode called Shark Trek. Um, <laughs> Shatner is a delight to watch. He is a delight to listen to him talk. And you forget that he is 90. You forget that yeah. he is 90. And you watch him underwater. I'm watching him do what I'm doing. He's doing it better, you know? And, you know, <laughs> and he's cracking wise and stuff. And I'm like, life goal, life goal, Andrew. You know, you got, you've, you've got another half century to get there, so. Wow. Uh, anyhow, if you check it out, you know, there's, it's, it's you know, it's a ton, bunch of dumb gags at his expense with phasers underwater and stuff, but his just, his good natured spirit and just watching, he's 90, he's 90 and he's, he's, uh, you know, he, he went, you know, I've, I'd heard in planning shows before, like, oh, what about this person? Yeah, but they won't go out. We, we maybe we'll get them in the water. We'll get them inside of a, a cage, but we can't, well, they won't go out. They won't go down there. And he was down there with, 14 foot tiger shark was probably emma you know he's down there with the fish and the sharks and all wow. that and scuba diving at 90 that's wow. intense what a what a gamer was, what a gamer shatner yeah. <laughs> yeah incredible incredible you know just it's every time i listen to him talk like he's funny he's got great stories i'm like he's 90 <laughs> Is it is it um like was it a special episode of of him being on it is it him a series with him you know, yeah, it's a Shark Week special, right? It's a Shark Week special. Yeah. Oh, okay. do. Shark Week has a bunch of specials. He had a special. Yeah. They did. Yeah. So okay. I think they did a Jackass one, too. Oh. I saw a clip of that. That was, that was a really that that that, that is an inspired that dude, idea. That dude That's straight a, up got bit. <laughs> well, oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, I mean, just just blood flying oh, all out. God. Yeah. 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 They're, the trailer for their new movie looks good, too. Yeah. Uh, man, what a. <laughs> hardest the, i've ever laughed in a movie theater the fact probably. that the fact that in our modern world in 2021 we can look at jackass as one of the more wholesome franchises <laughs> that that we have <laughs> like there's nothing that it's like hey look uh, uh guys willingly getting together and uh uh you know, doing dumb stuff and falling <laughs> down. Like it's just kind of wholesome and nice. And, and, you know, most of them have gotten their drug problems in line. <laughs> okay. We can't look at the trailer while we're doing the show. It's, it's funny. just funny. <laughs> it's just hilarious. The, uh, the, the thing that I read about <laughs> this, the Jackass forever movie is, uh, 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 I guess it was a sober set. So Bam Margera is not in it. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a few of the guys have have gone gone through it, including Steve O, and 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 now the vast majority of them are are on on the straight and narrow. Uh, I'm I'm gonna assume that uh, that doesn't count painkillers. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna bet some ibuprofen <laughs> gets to be on I, set. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't know what the what the line is. I mean, considering some of the stuff that Steve O was into, I I think he he probably uh he probably has to write it out a little bit more than than he would have otherwise. But uh. 
yeah, who knows? Uh, uh, but it, it's 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 just it's so funny because I, I was watching that that Shark Week thing just on mute at a restaurant, and I'm like, oh, that's just like fun and wholesome. If you were just like a, a kid now, you'd be like, oh, look at this iconic, fun, wholesome gang that just gets together and finds different ways that they can hit each other in the nuts. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well, gentlemen. It's been weird. All right, there we go. Good. Good weird things. Hell yeah. All right, well, we will take a, a few minutes here, get ready for after things. Yeah. Uh, now is a good time if you need to take a short break. Yeah, I can I can hang around to cover if uh yeah. I'm gonna uh, use yeah. the bathroom. Yeah, I'll go I'll go pee pee yeah. in the potty. Uh hey Justin. Hey, hey what's up, man? How goes it? How's your how's your weekend? You oh, weekend? it's been a bit of a, a tumultuous time. You know, there's some personal uh, uh, tragedy as a friend of mine uh, died last week, and um, it's uh, uh, so you know dealing with struggling a lot, a yeah. lot, a lot of lot of personal stuff. But um, well, you know, take it easy. Like we're you know we're here to to. To help support you. Yeah. And, uh, oh no, no, no. I mean, look, it, this is life. This is this is what happens. It's like you know, you can uh, you can look at it and, and say it dealt you an unfair hand, but at the end of the day, you got to play the same stupid card. So, uh, you know, it's a uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it is it is what it is, and um, you know, it'll be a few more a few more uh, weeks of of kind of juggling stuff through that. But uh, I took my car to the service center. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, good clean health? Uh, I don't know. I, I still got to pick it up. Oh. That's what I have to do. I have to leave here and then go pick up uh, pick up my car from the service center before it gets too late. Mm, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, you know, trying, trying to do, I don't know. I got into one of them things where I, I went through a bunch of stuff that I've been meaning to do, like make a dentist appointment and an mm. optometry appointment and probably I go visit the doctor. Yeah, that that's where I'm at right now. Is I'm I'm almost out of contact lenses, mm. and my prescription ran out last year, and so uh, the place I used to go to in town was nice and nearby. Yeah, but then they moved out of town. They moved they moved out to Bee Caves or something. Oh, which is a whole. If you don't know, audience, that's like an extra 30, 40 minute drive. Just yeah, to go see this so so optometrist. Um, and I, the thing the thing I'm considering. Yep is one of those online dealies where you like yeah. do a Skype call with an optometrist or something. I I don't know how much I, I mean, I don't think my prescription has changed much since I got it filled, you know, last year, two years ago. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I guess you don't have to do it for life. You can still go in and go do regular eye, eye doctor appointments, but like I, I don't know if for, for whatever reason because i've i've worn glasses and contacts forever yeah i've always had that and so i you know it it's it's important you know the cataracts running in my families um and so i don't want to i don't want to cut a corner if it means i might miss any sort of like screening for that but you don't need to go in every year um yeah i don't, I don't i've never regularly worn glasses I've, I've i've been given glasses for certain situations like yep. nighttime driving but like uh i've never worn them on a regular basis so uh, i'll be curious to see i think i might i might be in that 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 plane though i think i might actually have to wear glasses on a regular basis oh, wow. and then we'll see whether or not i need to but if you have a light contacts or yeah if you have a, like a light prescription then you'll be able to get contacts relatively quickly like i have i have such a bad uh yeah. prescription I feel that like, they have I don't to know, custom what, order it every gonna time be a, maybe i should just get transition lenses and just always look really weird <laughs> i feel like that, that could be a new phase for me you look like the coolest kid in school exactly all, all right. right uh friends thank you so much have a good after things thank you justin for hanging out with us today peace out sir ribbity dibbity do um so I, I I found out that there's going to be a visitor later on. So um, okay. that means I'll have less time to do my usual prep work for cord killers. So uh, I, I personally 
don't mind if we, if we keep after talk a little svelte. Sure. Like 20, 30 minutes? Yeah, that'd be great, actually, if that's okay with Andrew. Andrew? A very knowing nod from Andrew. Mm. <laughs> like, I, 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 I know the pain. <laughs> the struggle <laughs> is real. <laughs> I actually didn't hear anything you said. I was too busy crunching, and all I heard was crunch. <laughs> crunch. <laughs> no, it was like uh, uh, normally there's a good budget of time. Even if we go all the way to 4 o'clock, uh, you know, two hours is enough for me to get everything done for Cord Killers. Uh, but in this case, I found out we have a uh, out-of-town guest uh, who will be here at 4.30, and and so I'm I'm hoping to if we can keep it to maybe yeah. maybe we skip picks for after things as an as a part of yeah it. that's that's we'll just let Brian leave when he feels like it and we'll pretend he never existed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, then we'll send the chimps after him <laughs> go get them boys <laughs> we'll, we'll continue our secret after after things podcast yeah. <laughs> all right great <clears throat> um and we need to look at that mic button. I don't know why. The... Oh, is it doing the clicky thing when I press it? Uh, or... e yes. We have yeah. heard all of your coughs this evening. Oh, really? Yeah. Because what's funny is I've, I've even clicked it and then waited a couple of seconds before yeah. I cleared my throat. Yeah. I, I, and sometimes it takes a little bit to switch. Or... Right. So I don't, I don't know. We'll have to mess with that. And, yeah. Uh, figure Sorry it out. about that. No, it's it's fine. It's uh, it's nobody's, nobody's fault. Just bad hardware, probably. All right, uh, you ready to, to do it after things? Yeah. Oh, one sec. Okay, yeah. We'll do that. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us here at twitch.tv slash night attack. We'll be back with Cord Killers in a couple hours, by the way. And great night tomorrow. Make sure you tune in. All right, you ready to do this? Ready. All right, Andrew, I'm going to count you in for after things. Oh, that water tastes horrible. Oh, oh, I forgot that bad. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> all right. Ready. All right. We'll start after things in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the After Things podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by the diehards, the real team, the trio that matters, <laughs> Brian Brushwood. Yo, what up? And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Team matters. <laughs> team chimp. We'll take down any gorillas. Come at us. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I love Actually, saying that. Unfortunately, although... <laughs> our cheer has to be hoo. Uh, <laughs> hoo, hoo. And it doesn't work the same. Yeah. We need to work yeah. dogs I think into I have the like DNA. the worst attendance record of anybody, but notice how I try to call attention when somebody else can. <laughs> oh, look who's not here. Look who's not here. <laughs> this is simply the way that we've always done the show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, uh, I, so. I I had a moment. I, I I don't know if you had a pre-selected topic, but I had a moment that I've not had. It's gone now, Brian. Okay, well, <laughs> well, I, we'll try it on, and maybe there's not much to plumb there. Sure. But uh, I had a moment that I've never Narrator. had. Andrew in, didn't. In twenty-two years. Okay. Of uh, since I quit my day job, for the very first time ever, I was able to. Wait. Yes. I. Did you tell them you're quitting or you did leave? Is there a desk there somewhere at Dell where they're waiting for you to come back? Like no, Brian and, and, said and he was getting lunch. I, I, I have told I have told this versions of this story. Sorry. But 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 uh, May of 1999 was a year that I picked up uh, enough work. It was the first it was the first month ever where I did as much in uh, in the off hours magic as I made during the day. And it was around the time that my manager noticed, hey, uh, I've noticed several opportunities for advancement that you have not taken the initiative on. And normally, you know, you seem one of the hungriest ones in this group. What's what's up? And I'm like, yeah, I think that uh, uh, magic is doing really well and I'm not certain I want to stay. And so, you know, eventually I, I was like, yep, I'm going to quit and go do magic. Uh, uh, and <laughs> the VP of the division comes over and sits down and it was such, such a bizarre conversation because he's like, okay, what's it going to take to keep you? And it's like, let me, <laughs> let me do magic <laughs> full time. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and very clearly he, they, in a million years, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't really think believe. you were real. They thought you were negotiating. <laughs> yes. Yes. Correct. Correct. <laughs> and, uh, uh, that's when I quit, but in the intervening 22 years, uh, I've never been able to do the moment that I'm about to describe, which is uh, leave for six days and turn to somebody who is not me 
and shake his hand and say, take care of her and then leave. I've never, ever, ever, ever had any business in any shape that I could just turn things over to someone who is not me and not not hear anything about it and not think about it and actually be away at a family reunion. Um, it was truly extraordinary. And obviously it's not something that I could do all the time, but I've never been able to know that problems were going to come up and somebody who is not me is going to do something about them. And, and I waited for the phone to ring and the phone never rang. And it was, it was really, really remarkable. I, 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 uh, um, I know that this is a show about independent creatives and almost certainly what that means is that it requires you to show up if you're an independent creative, but for the first time, you know, we're, we're developing enough of a system that, uh, that enough can happen whether I'm here or not, which is, uh, I don't know. It was a really special moment for me. I, I had a, I, I mean, I had a similar experience when I took that month off a, a couple months ago of like, you know, uh, having all of these shows with, with the podcast and Scam Nation kind of uh, just well, and, hand, putting my hands out to everyone saying, here you go. Please uh, figure this out. I will be back in four weeks. Yeah. And, and for those who don't know, uh, 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 you know, cord killers, especially uh, right. boy, did 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 we get to see firsthand just just how much of an axle you are <laughs> on that wagon wheel. There, there's a lot of technical and presentation things that go into especially cord killers, which is a little more scripted. Um, and it's not easy to, to jump right in. And so, you know, I would, I would check in on, on the shows and, and stuff, especially the first week. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you just kind of have to, you, you, you have to put distance, right? You like the, the, the thing that I, the, you know, some of the stress feeling of like, oh, well, I'm the only person who's doing these shows. They are, it's not that I'm the only person who can, but I am the person whose responsibility is, right. is those shows. And so. How do I very quickly hand it over to somebody else? And John and, and Corey did a very good job of, of holding holding the holding the ship up for, and, uh, for, a, for an extended amount of time. And by the way, it, it was noticed and was appreciated that we saw you cheering from the sidelines, like, <laughs> you got this. <laughs> I had I had good luck. <laughs> I had to do that. So that I wouldn't be like sending Slack messages like, like "Hey, you gotta, you gotta adjust the thing. You gotta do this." <laughs> like I needed to, I needed to have a little cheerleader moment, and then I could go do my own thing. <laughs> uh, uh, what about you, Andrew? What uh, have you had a moment like that where you realized that that uh, that that there was a system that was going to handle things, and and that 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 it used to be a thing you had to do, but now you know there's a system to do it. Yeah, it was called Justin, and then he left. <laughs> And then, and then somebody <laughs> stole him <laughs> by yeah. way, all the way to Austin yeah. by way of Oakland. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I talk to Brett about that a lot now. <laughs> uh, I would say that, yeah, like when I started my magic publishing business, uh, a lot of it, because I, I, I wanted to go work and try to pitch TV shows, but trying to run a mail order and a wholesale thing on one coast while being on another coast periodically and pitching stuff was hard. And so when Justin and I started working together, you know, among the things that wonder and our enterprise was also iTricks, which you know, that was all Justin, that was all Justin doing all of that. And so, you know, I'd taken a thing that I'd spent several years, you know, 10 years doing by myself and had enough of a system that a smart person could come in and know how to pull those levers and often cases know how to do that better than I did. Right. Um, and, and that's that's helpful. Uh, uh, there are those brief moments like um, uh, I'm sure I'm sure I don't remember the specific episodes, but I remember the feeling of the very first time a uh, Scam Nation slash Scam School episode got released without me ever having seen any of the cuts, because mm. I remember thinking uh, they're 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 better at it than you at this point. You know, it's like it's yeah. like they, they know the voice and. Um, I remember that night. I remember that night very well. I was in the middle of recording an episode of our friend Roberto Villegas's podcast, and you called me, and I we and I think we were recording it live, and we had to like pause, and I had to go to like uh, the other part of his room so we wouldn't hear this conversation on stream. But I knew I had to pick up because the sh the at the scam school had just come out like an hour ago, and I was like, oh my gosh, uh, is something wrong? I'm gonna have to run back and. 
Uh, and then we had that exact conversation. They had the exact thing that you just said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and and uh, it speaks to the importance of, uh, uh, if if not written down, at least fully understood what the voice of the entity that is bigger than you is, and uh, so that other people can take action without you know fear of of screwing anything up or whatever mm. uh but uh and it, it was a doubly weird one because i left uh, you remember we did the we're in the middle of doing the the fundraiser uh normally whenever we add something to scam stuff we try to make it a bespoke item kind of a high-end uh clever thing or whatever but enough people have said hey man i just want a hat that says monorogue on it i just want a shirt that says monorogue on it or whatever yeah. and it's like well, i don't want i don't want to uh, as as the, the metaphor I always use is, nobody wants to buy a Cadillac that comes with a free pack of Twizzlers. <laughs> you know, I try I try to keep those things separate. Mm -hmm. But but in this case, it's like enough people have asked for a pack of Twizzlers that uh, that I'm like, uh, okay, we'll do it for a limited time as a pop up store. We'll do it as a fundraiser thing. So we leaned like. Uh, the way schedules worked out is I recorded for two hours straight in front of a green screen, uh, having no idea how it was going to turn out. And then just the next day, hopped on a plane and went to Reno, Nevada to go uh, meet family. And during that time, Brant put together a very funny green screen used car salesman commercial. Uh, 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 David and, and, and Corey uh, uh, populated the store with 75 different variants of, of various art and products and stuff on there. Yeah. And along the way, we also published multiple episodes of, of stuff that had been recorded some of which I still haven't seen, which is one of those things that I almost hesitate to say out loud because it makes it sound like I'm dialed out and don't care. I care very, very much, but but it's more, I mean that more as an indication of of my trust for the team. And and I had never gotten to really experience that before. And it was really, it was really precious. Yeah. I mean, there's there's only you, there is a certain amount of compartmentalization. Like I help shoot a lot of modern rogue episodes and I don't watch a lot of modern rogue videos, mostly because I was there. Right. I've like, seen it. <laughs> I, I'm good. Let me guess. One of them injures themselves. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so like, you know, I feel a little weird sometimes whenever I say that, but that's just what the, the divvying up is. And for that week, you know, you, Hey, you know what? Other things happened. Um, I have a, I have, I have a similar question or topic to bring up if we think we're we're around in the corner on this one um did, andrew did you have any any uh thing oh i have a thing we can talk about when we decide if we want to move on to something else but i let's go with this you you sure you go um so uh uh, uh scam nation or uh, the, the 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 youtube channel uh we, we're working with some some new editors now we've got some remote editors and and so i'm kind of in a kind of different place i'm kind of supervising them and either finishing or just lightly touching stuff instead of spending 10 hours a week, uh, you know, editing. Um, and I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for it. And also it's an entirely new paradigm for me in terms of like, like when I look at a cut that the, one of our editors send me, I just want to, put my hands right in it and just, I just, just do this. You just need to do this. You just need to do this thing. Right. And because there's a lot of technical stuff, we, we do scam nation is a pretty simple show technically, but there are still a couple of little things that we have and that we use. Um, how, how do you guys do, uh, how, how do you supervise people? I'm, I'm, I'm working my way through it. I'm trying to work my way through it, but I also, I don't want to be the nitpicky guy. I don't want to be the, neb you know the the very nebulous just do a thing and like i i want to find i don't know I, I the early days are the toughest because there are things you know about what it's supposed to be that you have to find the words to explain now you can explain the technical thing like hey just cut these three seconds out Mm -hmm. Or uh, and and uh, early days of scam school, uh, before I really understood what it was that we were going for, I it would be two, three full pages of zero o seven to zero o nine. If we can nip this just a little bit and uh, get to this point faster, that would be better or whatever. Um, and then later, as the voice becomes clear, you start to develop, you start to put words to your own set of rules, your own story bible basically your style guide and then you're able to say 
um, you know, you have these bon mots that, 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 that you uh, bring up like, uh, hey, whenever, uh, for example, uh, in Modern Rogue, um, uh, sometimes uh, either in the edit or in the story setup or whatever, uh, a very easy thing to do is to pit Brian versus Jason. And whenever we've done that, either on purpose or by accident, uh, seeing those comments of, you know, this guy, you know, one of them was way better than the other. He's a doofus, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Like all of that pains me. And so now, and, and at some point, uh, it, 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 it now is very easy for me to say, whenever possible, un unless there's a very good reason not to, whenever possible, it's never Brian versus Jason on anything. It is always Brian and Jason versus the world. And, and so, so now you, you, you've uncovered kind of a, a story beat. And, and for example, in Scam Nation, we've talked about how uh, I didn't start off realizing that the most important part of a Scam School episode was, as we call it, the C block, where, where they perform it back to us to prove that this trick is so easy, anybody can do it within 10 minutes of learning it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I discovered over time that it's like, unless you have that proof, and, and I would understand why an editor wouldn't see the point of any of that, where it's like, yeah, you see a trick, here's how it's done, end of episode. I understand why you would do that, but it undercuts the core message of that channel, which is you are here because you want to learn it. Here is proof that you, that you can learn it. And here are the mistakes you're most likely to make because this is somebody trying it for the very first time. So, so like, like these, these rule, these, you know, like the, I, maybe vaguely like the three laws of robotics. Once you discover them in yourself, it gets a lot easier to say, um, yes, you're going to make the same corrections, like nip this for this reason. Uh, and then, and then you could cite, remember, we always do blank because of blank. And then you're now you're citing sort of, uh, hopefully if, if you do it, if you do it right, and I've never done it right, but if you do it right, you actually have a story Bible style guide that you could point to. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but short of that, you can at least remind them again and again, like the why of, of that stuff. Mm. And then, and, and I, I know that, you know, first I went through it, um, discovering it on my own, working with revision three. Then I went through it with, uh, uh, the story, you know, with, with, with Brant, and then I did it with, with you yeah. and now you, and this is kind of fun for me to watch you <laughs> know, like, like at this mm -hmm. point, you know, what makes an episode and what doesn't. Right. And now you have to figure out the, how to add the, the why of everything. What's interesting is, um, uh, for, with, with the, our, our, our editors that I'm working with now, like when I came in, I had been, I had been watching scam school for, a, for a few years at that point. I mean, I had actually been watching Brant edit them live on Twitch or Justin.tv if it was that at the time. Um, and so I came in, you know, I've seen the show. I know the show. I know how the, how the guy works. And, and, um, our remote editors are not exact, uh, do, are, do not come from a long fandom say of, of the channel. And so, um, of either having watched the content for a long time or watched the process ever before. Right. And, um, uh, funny enough, you know, it, it, and I know this was more of an example, um, that you gave than, than a specific, but like, um, we actually like formats, formats, format wise, you know, there's, there's not any, any quibble or, or issue there. I'm not finding like, well, why didn't you, in, why did you throw away this whole thing? Like they're not getting rid of like core components. It's, it's either little technical stuff like, Hey, you need camera switches here, or this is too frantic, whatever. Or, um, uh, the, uh, the surprise that I got, which is, hey, I don't know how the trick works. Like they have the footage of us edit of us doing it and teaching it. And, but for whatever reason, with the t with a, a week or two weeks to do it, I I, I kind of know, but I I kind of made a I kind of had to guess at it, and so the, the, this is you saying it or the editors? this is this is them saying the, like yeah, I, I, I I I'm, here's my cut I kind of only kind of got it, um uh and so that's kind of where I'm going because like because like because the thematic stuff would be I feel like I would be I would be easier to be like well, no we kind of need a C block and C block should look like this this block should look like this um that. Where it's it's the minutia. It's like how finely grained do I need to go in and say, hey, you need to fix that. You need to fix that. You need to fix uh, that. You need to fix that. Bryce, I'm gonna say something 
that might make you uncomfortable, but brings me great joy okay. and hope. Uh, I hope is something that, that Andrew Maine is pleased to hear. Um, you know more about magic than most magicians I can name. You have studied the art <laughs> yeah. in terms of hours and uh. core principles and fundamentals and citations and execution and storytelling. Uh. You have put in more legwork than than on a number by number basis. <laughs> yeah. The, Oops, I did 10,000 hours. Majority, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oops, I did 10,000 hours and now I'm a magician <laughs> by Bryce Castillo. Like that is, I, I'm not even joking about that. And I yeah. think that's part of why our shooting set, uh, our shooting goes so smoothly is because you know what, what we, you, uh, you, you know what things either you could flash back to if we need to, or, or that you right. know how to summarize in a lower third, you know, the core principles we've already covered a million times and we can expect our audience to already know. And, and, um, uh, that's what a, what a wonderful, fun problem that you have. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so it's, it's what I had as yeah. well, you know? And so, and so I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to figure out this balance of how, how, you know, how, how fine detailed do I go in when I get, cause I, I'll give them notes. I'll give them, I'll give them all the notes. And I don't know if that's overbearing, you know, I don't want to be an overbearing boss if that is too literal if that's too minute uh, uh, last thing i'll say is because unfortunately when you're given notes you have to type them all out and with time codes and all that stuff mm. uh, uh uh the only thing is as much of a pain in the butt it is to add the why uh, uh the more you do it early on the less you have to keep adding the why on things okay. and then you just get to cite good to know i have very limited i mean I've never really had much experience being a boss and at one, I was never really good at it. I could say that mistakes that I made and things that I appreciated working for other people is um, knowing what success is supposed to look like, clear, clear outcomes, this by, in, this by Monday, this by Tuesday. And often like, because you give people a list, we could do this. That'd be cool. But sometimes like I get anxious when somebody, like I get anxious when people are like, Oh, we could do this. And you know, whatever at your pace and whatever I'm like, give me a deadline, give me a day that you want it, you know, and I'll build in a buffer to get it done. Mm. If it's too open, it, it being open, it may feel like you're giving them more freedom, but often it's, you're making things worse because you have to, you go through the stress of prioritizing right. because you don't, I don't know what I'm going to get more notes on. I don't know what's going to take more work to get there, but like Brian, like why, like tell help people understand the outcome. Cause we need to do this. And then, you know, anyhow, I would yeah. say that's helpful for me. It's very clear as like, Tell me what's expected. What what what's the end product supposed to look like for you, and then I'll figure and, out how to get and, there. And and the, the the real tough thing is uh, what the editors want. Um, and and I, I don't know if you went through this phase or not, but what I what I suspect what, uh, most editors want is to be told specifically do these things because then you could do them and know that you did them. Mm -hmm. um, and and I I try instead to say, by this point, we should fully understand blank or we should be feeling blank. And uh, those, Which, are, those are more challenging yeah. notes, but, but, but it also gives them more freedom to, to get us there. Which, which I think is, is a part of the, uh, uh, part of what one of our editors is, is especially new to working with us. And I think that's something that they are still um, understanding is that we don't shoot to a script we have very little written down when we shoot. So, you know, I, I try to, you know, uh, when I give them assignments, I try to have clear deadlines of like, hey, uh, this is when we would like the episode to go up. This is when I need you to give me stuff. Um, if you you figure it out, like like I, I want I want to be doing that as much as I can because they're adults, they're professionals. They know how to do this. Um, um, yeah. So. Uh, question, uh, do uh, I, I actually don't know the process of how we train up. Um, do, do we point people to like, uh, like here's three hours of watching me edit this, that, or the other thing to, to see what the process looks like? I mean, we haven't really trained up very many people before. So that's, that's part of it is like synthesizing that process. Like, I, like I, I had a zoom meeting with, with one of the editors the other day, which I did record and send to both of them of like, Hey, here's how we, here's how I start a file. Here's how I 
put the footage together. Here's how these different assets look and work together. Um, and like just over this weekend, I like updated, I did a big update refresh on our template. And so writing out a, like a huge, like documentation on what this thing, what these new things are, how they work, all of that stuff. It's it, that's still very much a trial by fire of like what works, what are people receptive to and to what types of, of folks does that stuff work? Cause I don't believe that either of the two editors that I'm working with are like into magic or like really no magic very much. Um, and so, um, uh, oh, th that, that was the other thing I was saying is like, we, you know, we don't shoot with a script. And so there is a certain, there's almost a reality TV show element to it of like, this is what your footage is. You have to be the writer to some degree and put it together. Um, which but is, which can be kind of daunting, especially if you are a, you know, an editor or like a Merc editor, because that is what editors kind of generally expect for high put for well put together stuff like this they expect a script they expect to have a thing that says this is what the thing we would like you to make looks like but it's on paper so you do it in video yeah and it, I, I man that might be a fun exercise uh and by fun i mean important and maybe not fun uh but but to actually write down core principles and like number one might be before you edit one frame uh, uh or before you do any of the hard work do you understand the trick like like Mm -hmm. truly and if not call bryce and if bryce doesn't have the words for it call brian uh but yeah. but but to tell the story do you you know can you do the trick uh not that you have to go out and try it on a friend but you have to understand the story I guess. yeah i think i'm still kind of getting a lay of the land a little bit with especially with the newer editor like i i'm still trying to find where the gaps are to fill them in yeah um but but hopefully that leads to a better sense of okay well I I know what it's like to be in that position and now I've got a bet I'm I'm comfortable here in this new position and have can more templatize and formatize and and um, spread information around so yeah I I'd say too like I one of the things that I'm kind of lucky to be able to do is and it's helped me a lot like working with OpenAI like we have we have new models and stuff that come out and I'm often the first one to volunteer to do documentation. Although in the entirety of the workforce of open AI, I am not the person that should be doing, <laughs> you know, as far as who understands how everything works, not it, but I want to learn how everything works. So I'm like, I'll do it. I'll do it. Cause then I get to talk to people. And then the process of me trying to explain it to other people, man, I learn a lot more about the process. I learn a lot more like, oh, why do we do this? And sometimes we're like, oh, I don't know, we just did that. Like, oh, that's a good point. Let's change this up or whatever. And so I would say that like for you, Bryce, the exercise of breaking this down to say, this is here, this is here, this here, it's here. It's helpful to also understand like, oh, where could we improve it? I, I never learned more magic faster than uh, the two years that I did uh, summer camp teaching magic uh, up in the Pocono Mountains because every single day, was I would get through a lesson with the kids, kids would get it down or whatever, and then I would immediately open up book, start Practice going for tomorrow. what am I gonna do tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally, I mean, it's it's brutal, but but man, is it an, a, a, no better way to learn than to teach. So yeah. uh, get ready to be an even better magician. Well, and yeah, and yeah, the few times that I've done a little bit of teaching, I, di I did a, actually did a little, a very little bit of teaching in college, but like, I was I was receptive to it, I was into it. And I'm totally into training people up, getting people oriented and stuff. Um, and the, there's just a little... You, you've talked about this before, Brian, of when you have, a, a, say, a hot take where you kind of work through it with multiple people before you finally bring it to a show. Which, which or I know recording. is very taxing for everyone to hear. <laughs> he's, on it, he's on it again. But, and it's like, no, 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 I'm refining it. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that's a little where I'm at with this process is like, Okay. Oh, oh, these are like, I need to know what the scope is of this whole thing first before I can really feel like I'm in the right spot to write, write anything down. Uh, but I would like to, because that's, that's the next part. Yeah. Uh, that's the other nice thing as tedious as, as writing email notes are now you can just go through your, you, you ever, you ever just go through your send folder and, and read your own words and, and, mm. you know, so like, how do I sound to other people? And, and, you know, maybe you got a few years distance between you and, and when you wrote that and you're like, Oh, I came off as an ass or, Oh, uh, uh, that's, that's fairly insightful. That mm. kind of thing. 
So uh, the nice thing is you'll have written about it, and then you could go through and just grab all those snippets, throw it all in a doc, and and you'll already be 70% of the way to a style guide or a Bible or whatever. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I I go back. I'm like, man, I am in my head. I'm this, dear sir, I kindly <laughs> implore upon you, why did this happen? <laughs> what is wrong? <laughs> Like when I first started work, the Justin is like, I, I, I try to be very low bandwidth sort of short thing, but this poor kid's getting me like, what the hell's going on here? What the hell? Why is this down? This is misspelled. You want to grab lunch? (laughs) (laughs) I remember, I remember, I think the second email you and I ever swapped was me mentioning somebody who had a similar idea to yours and, and asking if I should introduce you and you're like, yeah, sure. Unless he's a, a communist, <laughs> I, and I found that delightfully forward, and I knew we would be friends. I have to, I, I do have to catch myself when I write notes. Sometimes, sometimes I see something that's so bizarre. I have to go. I I type it out. Like, what the f word are you doing? And then I have to delete it just so that I get. <laughs> Yeah, I in my because like like I said like me like I like, oh this is stupid this change this whatever because it's the same dialogue in my head, and it's not you're stupid it's mm-hmm. no this thing here is stupid, uh, but and I've had to learn I'm still learning I'm yeah. still learning I'm still learning. Uh, <laughs> just... So so, so do, is there uh, and this hopefully will be an even bigger challenge for you. Uh, mm. Number one, I'm, I'm sorry I missed last week because I was traveling, but uh, uh, I, I assume you you got to, to flex and strut about your your New York billboard. Uh, and, oh, he and did. Talk, talk about that. Uh, the uh, 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 Number one, congratulations. I saw that and I just I grinned you. ear to ear. It was, made me so happy. But, but uh, do you find yourself in the marketing of stuff finding things where somebody thinks they have a good idea and, and you're like, uh, uh, you know, so-and-so character would never do that or something like that. I mean, with people pitching my stuff to me or yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or, or, or pitching the way they want to market it or blurbs about you or, or imagine I mean, we want to, we want to make a commercial with yeah. a model who's Jessica and she's going to do this. Go right. on, and, go and, on. And she's going to eat a hamburger. Three noses. <laughs> and you're like, Jessica Black, which does not have three noses. I don't know where you got that idea. <laughs> I'll consider it. I work with, I, the team I work with is, I, I work with a great team. We'll get we'll get like sometimes we'll have like the blurbs and stuff for the books. And some books I wrote a lot of those. This one, like I have a new one come out. I don't think I wrote, I maybe tweaked something, but sometimes I've gone through because you know, the person who does it, they've got 20 things they've got to do, and maybe they never read they they're looking at my description of the book and I have to figure out how to pitch it. And like sometimes I get like, this is just and I'll go rewrite it. And then, you know, the publisher's cool. But you know, I don't like lately, I don't think I've had to do that. I've been in pitch meetings where I've had producers pitch stuff to me. And I even went along once with some people. I liked them, but like their take on stuff, I was just like, this is just wrong. This is really, I don't, I don't. You do realize this is not my book. You just described the plot of green eggs and ham. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Which would be okay. And I'm not, but it's not like, oh no, you know, uh, she has to live on the left side of the street, not the right side. It's gotta be this. I'm not like that at all, but it might be like, like I had somebody's like wanted to write one of my characters, have them. Oh, and they're super infatuated with this other person. And I'm like, that's not who they are. Like that's, mm. that's like, that's literally not their it's factually so incorrect. It's, it's antithetical to, to yeah. <laughs> how they're yeah. written. Yeah. Cause I'd be like, if that was true, then we have to accept a lot of other things that would be true. That would change who the character is. Mm. And, and I was trying to entertain it cause I was trying to be accommodating, but I'm like, after the fact, I'm like, like I was told my agent, like I didn't like that at all because it was just that's not that person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, and uh, I, it's, and I can it's be... good that you heard it out. I mean, like and and recognize that, like, hey, this is not really the way I want to see this. Like, that's that's a good that's good behavior. It's a good it's a good reaction to that. Yeah, and then you gotta you have to find that you have to sort of you have to choose your battles carefully because it's like uh, you know because it depends if you. Writers sometimes have a very bad reputation sometimes because they they go in and they're going to tell people who know how to make TV shows how to make a TV show. Mm-hmm. And, right, and I never wanted to be their up. TV show. Yeah. And in my defense, I've made TV. I've never but I've not made, you know, drama. I've never done that kind of stuff either. But also in my defense, 
I can look up somebody's INDB and Rotten Tomatoes and say, they don't know how to make TV, <laughs> <laughs> which I've done. I've done. I've had like, what about this person? I'm like, I, I tried to watch this last series. It was really dumb. Mm. It was really dumbly written. I don't think they're going to be a good fit for me because, you know, then have other people like this person's amazing and they do, they'd have a totally different take than I would, but I think they would bring something awesome to it. Yeah. So, uh, last little thing talk about, yeah. I think it's kind of cool is coming up soon. is going to be the launch of play date. Oh yeah. Brian, have you seen the play date? No, uh, the play date's super cool. Andrew, do you want to describe it while I pull it up? Yeah, there's been some software developers called uh, Panic, and they've developed really cool Mac apps and tools over the years. I've used a few of these. I think they're they're really conscientious developers. They have a really great aesthetic. And then they just announced out of the blue, like a year or so ago, hey, we're going to build our own handheld. Oh, that's wonderful. And so it's kind yeah, of... Yeah, people are like, everything you do is really high quality and well thought out. They partnered with Teenage Engineering, which makes a lot of really cool uh, music-related devices and stuff. So Teenage Engineering to kind of do the hardware design, and you've you've you know people are like, oh, it's so it's going to be 179 bucks, and people are like, oh, well that's you know, well it's like it's bespoke. You know, this is yes. a it's mm -hmm. it's a yeah you have to accept understand it's, it's an it's indie vinyl company is what it is right, and mm -hmm. it comes but, with games. Pe yeah. Like people don't know it actually will come with like a bunch of games. Yeah. Uh, so they've done. Uh, 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 oh, sorry, uh, uh, not to cut you mm. off, but, but this immediately made me think of um, the uh, the new Vive uh, or uh, not Vive, uh, the Steam uh, uh, answer to the mm -hmm. oh, the Switch. Steam Deck. Oh That's my right. God, I'm so into it. Uh, uh, I wait, this thing this thing runs on a hand crank? Uh, no, it has a crank as a controller. That is an oh. input. That's cool. And so it kind of looks like this Game Boy with kind of an A B and a D pad, but it is like. USB rechargeable. You can use this analog crank as an input device. It's uh, an e-ink display. Oh, is it e-ink? Okay, I didn't. Yeah. Or it's a version of that, so it's just a, it's an always-on passive display. How cool! Yeah, and um, I I think they they announced this this seasonal thing uh, a few months ago, but they're like just if you buy one, you're just gonna get this like eighteen games, tw I twenty four games. You just get free games for this device which is like like i remember buying a playstation uh, as a child and my parents going so cool so what do you do with it well I, you got to go buy the games too <laughs> right i mean i mean to to how many grandmas had a uh, an, an nes and it was never used for anything other than super mario <laughs> like, right. like it was just the super mario station <laughs> uh that's cool that is a toy that is straight up a mm -hmm. toy that will never need to be updated right. and and will my family my whole family can play with uh, at all times uh yeah click, definitely be buying click, this they have so they have an add-on where it's a little it's a pen holder and speaker thing that it plays like i think a version of pool fm so you can mm -hmm. just sit on your desk and chill out and listen to some tunes oh, and then if and it holds it holds pens and it comes with a pen of course <laughs> which is like Click. you did like talk about a twizzler with a cadillac but <laughs> <laughs> there you go. click on the de developer part too sure uh this so is you'll be able to make and develop games in the browser and you'll be able to just sideload them straight into it so it's going to work with like they have an sdk coming and they're going to have a, an in-browser game editor how cool. Yeah. It's so so you could write like um uh I wonder if you could do a cut paste on an existing game and put your family in it, you know, as all the characters. I wouldn't be mm -hmm. surprised if there was if there was like a website for that, like yeah. a play date by numbers or something where you put in a JPEG of a you know the fa like if you if you make a jib jab, you could make right. you could make jib jabs for this. I or, think. or or take a, a murder mystery and make it a who stole the cookie and it's all you it's you know It's all your family mom, members. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's so fun. Um, also, separately, I am very excited about that Steam Deck thing. I may, I may get the expensive one and then uh, barely ever play it. Just the idea of unlocking my Steam library in in a mobile device. Oh man, I got a lot of games in my Steam library. I I have a lot of games <laughs> in my Steam library. <laughs> I'm I I I like the Steam Deck. I like it on paper. I don't like the look of it. Only because it reminds me of the Wii U tablet controller. Yeah. Which I liked using. I thought was not as big and clunky as it seemed. But I didn't feel that way until I used it. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. And I've used and I and I've used a Steam controller before, which I did not like. There, there's a number of games that I have waited eons for somebody to finally port to mobile so I could buy them again. Mm -hmm. um, like the King's Bounty series is a strategy game that I love very. It's turn based, um, and and just. They've never made a decent one for a mobile platform, and to me, that's what this is. I, I get to play. I get to replay all of those King's Bounty games, and yeah. Uh, JC Calhoun mentions the Atari Lynx. Uh, not gonna lie, definitely sold uh, 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 my entire uh, uh, early. Oh, what's the guy who made Spawn? Um, Oh, McFarlane. Uh, yeah, uh, Todd McFarlane started off as a uh, uh, assistant uh, 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 pencil work guy uh, on the Gray Hulk run uh, in Marvel Comics, and I sold, I sold all of them so that I could buy an Atari Lynx. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> in high school, <laughs> and at first I felt like a real sucker when he went on to be like the most famous guy in comics, and then then I felt less like a sucker when all of comics tanked. <laughs> it's I'll tell you too, kind of the attraction for. Uh, like the Steam Deck is Mac user here. Oh, sure. That's oh, all yeah, you finally get to play them at all. <laughs> what are these games? What are these other games I've never heard of? Which, what? It, it, which is an interesting thing. The Steam Deck will run uh, Steam OS, which is a Linux uh, is, is a Linux port, but they have uh, Proton, which is a emulation layer, so a supposedly a lot if not most windows games will run through it but the other thing that they've said is you could just put windows on this thing if you want it's got usb port you could just put windows on it the which i think like they, they don't sell enough because i think that's what people want and they don't want to accept that people just want to play steam on on windows uh the article i read today was saying like pretty much up through this year they could guarantee the like the lowest they're seeing is uh 30 frames per second which raises an eyebrow, but then you got to remember nowadays games get pretty demanding on PCs. Well, and so. also that screen is only basically 720p. Yeah, um, which is it. Which hey, guess what has worked for Nintendo for the past four years? Yep. So you kind of like I, I, it's it's this it's a neat thing. It's a neat thing on paper. I I just I seeing is believing with handhelds for me at this point. Yeah. You know. And 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 they bothered, you know, they do say you could hook it up to a TV, but I mean, unless you're Wouldn't going to, to your cabin in the woods, that's the only time I'm thinking of <laughs> that you're battery like two to eight hours. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, obviously, lower. when you're running some some heavy duty stuff, uh, but yeah. but but for you know for a strategy game, I just want all my strategy games. I want my I want my civilizations and all that stuff. Well, that's the other thing is. Uh, 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 this is too fine for this detail for this is too fine detail for this conversation but the little touch pads that they have those yeah. are those are the things on the steam controller i especially did not like oh no and because the promise is we're going to unlock all of your mouse and keyboard games with touch pads and stuff and it, it wasn't it certainly i'll just say it wasn't there a few years ago yeah. um they were very high fidelity pads but it just it wasn't the right feeling. Uh, okay. I don't know. Last but thing I'll say about this, JC Calhoun is saying there are Civ versions of Civ for iOS and Android. Yes, there are they're versions. All, they're, they're garbage. Yeah. They're garbage. Yeah. They're clunky. They're hard to, I, I hate them. And then Fool to Dream says the storage is kind of crappy because the low cost one is uh, a basic SSD. And then the next level up in terms of storage and price is like an, an M2 uh, yes. drive. Uh, it, okay, last thing I'm going to say, ICU <laughs> is like, hey, man. Not to be a broken record, but these games are on Switch. Does Brian even know what a They're Switch not good is? On Switch. I have a Switch. It's not They're good garbage, on Switch. and I also don't want to rebuy over 250 games. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I think, like, anybody who wants to get into politics should get into <laughs> game journalism first. <laughs> 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 I think that's the good test, you know. Are doing like a an a, an iOS and Android show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's that's probably a good point to go out. <laughs> My, right. uh, uh, our pick is things. Things. <laughs> yes. Yeah. My, my 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 pick is the play date. I don't know if it's a good or not, but I like what they're doing there. Like yeah, I do doing. too. Cool, gentlemen. It's been after. Thank you. All right. I mean, don't get me wrong. If a Switch came <laughs> with all the games I already bought for over over 15 years, mm -hmm. then yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Right. 
All right, everybody, we are going to go offline. We'll be back in about two and a half hours with uh, Cord Killers. We'll be uh, Brian and Tom Merritt and our special guest, Meryl Barr, will be joining us on the podcast this, this evening. So love you guys. And for that, great night tomorrow uh, at Andrew Main on Twitter. Don't give him a follow, y'all. Mm. Or my billboard and pin station. Go Whatever. see his so billboard. Cool. So cool. So cool. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.